cetaceans, which is the clade of animals in the Holocene epoch containing whales, dolphins, and porpoises, are the largest animals on Earth today and also the most popular marine mammals. Some species, such as Balaenoptera musculus, the blue whale, can reach up to 200,000 kilograms in weight and reach up to 30 to 33 metres in length. Meanwhile, the vaquita, endemic to the Sea of Cortez in California, doesn't even reach 5 feet or 152 centimetres in length, weighing less than 50 kilograms the majority of the time. This shows that even in the ongoing Holocene mass extinction event, cetaceans are a very diverse family, with an absolutely massive range in size from the smallest to the largest species. Unfortunately, of the 94 species of living cetacean, 23 of them are threatened, either being vulnerable, endangered, or critically endangered. One species from China, known as the Baiji, also known as the Yangtze River Dolphin, is believed to be completely extinct, having last been seen in 2007, with no confirmed sightings since. However, in this video, we are going to pose a question, and that is, what if all cetaceans either went extinct or never even existed? Now, as crazy as it sounds, this actually once nearly happened. As international whaling around the time of the 1950s, 60s, and 70s nearly brought all whale species to extinction via overhunting. Even today, many cetacean species are still recovering from the mass slaughter that took place prior to the ban on whaling. If we are talking hypothetically here, and we assume whaling was not banned in 1986, then it can be assumed that cetacean species overall would most likely have already gone extinct by now, likely by around 2000 to 2010. Also, keep in mind that this is only a general trend, and not all whale species have increasing populations, as is the case with the vaquita, Hector's dolphin, the North Atlantic right whale, and Rice's whale, just to name a few. So, if cetaceans were not around, then the largest animal on Earth today would likely be the whale shark which can weigh up to 30 tonnes, reaching a length of around 18 to 19 metres. The new largest mammal on Earth today would be the African bush elephant, Loxodonta africana, which can grow up to 396 centimetres tall at the shoulder and can weigh nearly 11 tonnes. Without cetaceans, the largest marine mammal on Earth would be the southern elephant seal, scientifically known as Moronga leonia. Although each of these animals are very impressive in their own right, no doubts there, they are all vastly outsized by the blue whale, and the fin whale and all of the right whales by at least three to four times each. The clade Whippermorpha, which currently contains hippos and cetaceans, would also experience a downsize by around 48 times, with only two species of hippopotamus remaining. Unfortunately today, both species of hippopotamus are threatened with extinction, meaning that the entire 50 million year old clade, Whippermorpha, will likely be extinct very soon, assuming that this hypothetical scenario ever actually happened. Rather surprisingly, hippos and whales are actually pretty closely related to each other, along with to antelope, giraffe, sheep, goats, deer, pigs, and even camels. If we assume that cetaceans suddenly disappeared overnight, then the entire order of Artiodactyl would experience a rough... Unfortunately, there would actually be problems if cetaceans disappeared, and not statistical problems, and they're far more ecological. If whales had either gone extinct a long time ago or never even existed in the first place, then krill populations would likely be much higher than they are today, even with global warming. Krill feed on microscopic marine algae, 
commonly known as phytoplankton. And similar to other types of algae, and just other plants in general, these microorganisms suck up carbon dioxide and produce oxygen. This process is known as photosynthesis. And another type of photosynthetic organism are trees, which share more in common with phytoplankton than you might think at first glance. As a result of photosynthesis, phytoplankton are responsible for 50% of the world's oxygen supply, the other 50% being contributed by trees. Just as importantly as producing oxygen, phytoplankton suck up or absorb carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas. And I don't think I need to explain what greenhouse gases do that is bad for the planet. You see, the more whales there are, the more phytoplankton there is, producing oxygen and absorbing carbon dioxide. Because the whales eat the krill that eat the phytoplankton. So the more krill, the less phytoplankton there is. With less phytoplankton in a world without whales, there would likely be far more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. The average global temperature would likely be way higher, and there would be far more environmental and natural disasters. With less phytoplankton in a world... You also might have heard that whenever a whale dies, its body becomes an entire new ecosystem, and this is actually true. As the carcass attracts a whole new group of scavengers, at least that live on the sea floor. Sleeper sharks, hagfish... Various crustaceans and several bony fish species are only some of the organisms that take advantage of a dead whale. And without these giant's corpses, many animals would likely go hungry. There are also some more specific species roles, such as orcas keeping great white sharks out of certain areas, and smaller porpoise and dolphin species keeping fish populations under control. Just to name a few. Overall, a world without whales, dolphins and porpoises would not be a very nice place to live, especially if you're a marine biologist. However, it's unlikely that this will ever actually be the case, at least not for a very long time. 14 of the 16 baleen whale species, along with the vast majority of dolphins, are increasing in population, only being occasionally hunted by Japan, Iceland and Norway. However, the same is not true for all cetacean species, as the miniature vaquita and multiple freshwater dolphin species are in rapid decline, especially in the 21st century, thanks to pollution, hunting, and being caught as bycatch by fishing vessels and boats. Now, this is probably the most optimistic video in a series I want to create known as A World Without, which will look at the planet Earth, without certain species or genre of animals. And a disclaimer, some future episodes might get a little depressing. Thank you very much for watching, and next episode I will be looking at the genus Spinosaurus, the species Spinosaurus aegyptiacus. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and enjoy the video.